All right, Shalawama, everybody. I'm Dr. Yasapa. Uh, welcome to this <clears throat> live stream. This is the free astral theology course. Um, the book that we're using is the Zodiac and the Gospels, okay? The Zodiac and the Gospels, the secret truth about JC, the Christ figure. We're on page 211. Let me check my signal. Give me one moment, please. Don't you hear? I don't hear you. We're on page okay. All right. Okay. So it looks like the signal is all right. <clears throat> okay, we're on page 211. I have some things I want to show y'all. Uh, just want to visualize a few things for you and bring something to your attention, okay? So you see the uh, textbook for the course. Again, welcome. I'm Dr. Yasapa from Zion Law School. This is the free astro theology course. And our textbook <clears throat> is the gospel and the Zodiac, the secret truth about JC, the Christ figure. This is written by the Reverend Bill Darlison. Okay, written by the Reverend Bill Darlison. And excuse my voice, y'all. I um I've been sleeping under the air conditioning and it's not really good for me as you can hear. That's why I don't like air conditioning too much because I have these respiratory effects. All right. But anyway, <clears throat> so please uh overlook it if you can. But let's get into it. I want to bring some some things to your attention on page 211. The second paragraph, it begins the connection of these themes with this with the sun, that's the S-U-N sun, comes out clearly in Mark's narrative. So go down, uh, you'll hear to the to the sentence, I believe it's the uh third sentence down. It says the cockroach which marks Peter's denial of JC is associated with the sun. So let's go ahead and verify that. I wanna just show you all, okay? I wanna show you. Uh, the image, okay? So let me just pull this up. See how to figure out how to do this. Okay, here, so here's the cockerel. Let's see, did that change it? No, okay, that didn't change it. I was trying to do it without stopping the screen share. So I guess I need to stop, stop the screen share and let me do it again. Oh, well. All right, so let's see if y'all can see it now. Yeah, all right. So you see, this is a rooster. These are roosters, right? So take a look at the rooster's head. What does it remind you of? What does that remind you of? Reminds you of the crown of thorns that the Christ wore, right? crown of thorns that the Christ wore. Now imagine, look at the cursor here. Imagine this rooster head, you couldn't see it. Let me see if I can, let me see. I'm gonna try to reduce it so I can, well, no, I can't work with it. But imagine if there was a line right here cutting off the rooster's head. And just imagine if that's, the ocean or a landscape, okay? Can you see the sun rising, y'all, in the morning? Let's say 5.30, 5.45 in the morning. Can y'all see the sun rising? Doesn't this look like a rising sun or a crown of thorns? Y'all see it? Can y'all imagine that? So that's what's happening there. 
there's more to it. There's more to it. But I'll, I'll show something else so y'all can get, um, let me show, I'm gonna show another image for y'all. All right, so let's see. Uh, all right, so tell me what y'all think about this. Do you see the crown? This is actually the sun. Clear. <clears throat> and here's Christ's crown of thorns. Okay, so those projections are actually rays of the sun. Do y'all see that? Okay, everybody. So Peter denied the Christ, was it three times before the cock roll would crow? Okay. So can we associate that three maybe with the three days that the sun appears to be dead from December 21st, 22nd, and it resurrects, comes back to life or reborn on December 24th at 12 o'clock midnight, which is the beginning of December 25th. Hence Christ is resurrected. Can we? I mean, what's that three there for? Well, the crab moves laterally, right? Side to side. So cancer has something to do with this too. But I'm I'm just putting two and two together, okay? I haven't I haven't done like some <clears throat> spent time with this. I'm just telling you guys what immediately comes to my mind. Okay, I want you to to just visualize what's happening here so that you can see the astro theology in it. Okay? So uh, anyway, let me go back to it, our image, uh-oh, there we are, and just imagine water. Okay, and that's the rising sun. Can y'all, oh, y'all, oh, man, you know what? I do apologize. I just realized y'all are not looking at what I'm looking at. Let me show it again. StreamYard, that's why I, I don't really like StreamYard, y'all, to be honest with you. All right. So anyway, that was the rooster, right? Looks like the crown of thorns that the Christ wore, okay? Representing the sunrise, the rising sun. So does everyone see that? Mm. Yummy. Thank you. All right. So let's let's continue moving. Give me one second. Uh, All right. So let's let's continue. Okay. Let me see if if, if this will work. Let me see if this shows. No, it doesn't show. All right, so every time I guess I need to stop. Every time I need to stop <clears throat> and go back and redo it. Toxic. All right. 
So let me uh, let me get this together, y'all, and then I will show you the next. Okay. Give me one moment. Let me close out. I had a lot of screens open. Let me close some of this out so I don't get confused. Still got some things I want to show y'all. Always good to visualize things, right? Always good to visualize. Let me close some of these out. All right. Oh, boy. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at this. Let me make sure. Are we? Oh, hold on. All right. Man, it's such a long delay. Such a long delay. Okay. So Helios. Let's look at the Encyclopedia Britannica. Okay. Helios, in Greek religion, the sun god, sometimes called a titan. He drove a, tra a chariot daily from the east to west across the sky and sailed around the northerly stream of ocean each night in a huge cup. Doesn't this part remind us about Horus who walks across the sky in 12 steps, right? But anyway, let's continue. In classical Greece, Helios was especially worshipped in Rhodes, where from at least the early 5th century BCE, he was regarded as the chief, lowercase g-o-d, to whom the island belonged. Okay, his worship spread as he became increasingly identified with other deities, often under Eastern influence from the 5th century BCE, Apollo. <clears throat> so you'll see plenty of references to Apollo being the Tetragrammaton in the book, The Devil's Pulpit by Robert Taylor. Y'all go back and watch that. Apollo, Apollyon. Greco-Roman mythology, a deity of manifold function and meaning, one of the most widely revered and influential of all the Greek and Roman deities. Though his original nature is obscure, from the time Homer onward, he was the deity of divine distance, okay, etc., etc., etc. That's what I want y'all to see, okay? Helios became associated with Apollo, All right. Look at look at this. Apollo originally a deity of radiant. That's a ref, that's a solar reference, right? That's a reference to the sun. Of solar purity, of radiant purity was more and more interpreted as what, y'all? The sun deity. Under the Roman Empire, the sun itself came to be worshiped as the unconquered sun. Y'all got it? <clears throat> so you should know uh, that the images of the Christ figure, of course, are always, well, let me, let me, let me, let me show y'all so you don't have to believe me. It's not just JC who's a Christ figure. I mean, who's the sun deity, okay? Not just JC, but there are many sun deities, okay? Many, very many. Let me pull this up. So let me show y'all this. Now, y'all Hebrew Israelites are probably saying, oh, oh, that's not right because they corrupted, you know, and all of that stuff. They corrupted the truth and, <clears throat> well, you cannot pick and choose, fellas. 
you cannot pick and choose, right? You cannot pick and choose because you're using their records willfully. Not now one of y'all has, has went out here and, and, and created your own book of the law, your own Old Testament, your own New Testament. So get out of here with that. You cannot pick and choose. Okay. So here's JC the Sun did. Here is a image of a what appears to be a moor, a Moorish woman right here. Y'all see that? Still with the sun. Maybe this is the Mary, yeah, this is the Mary and the child. <clears throat> okay, y'all, still with the sun behind her, crowned with the sun. Can y'all see it? Yeah, all right, crowned with the sun. So let me see. So I mean, it just goes on and on and on, right? That, that's all I want y'all to see. Okay, I would <clears throat> I would like to see some Hebrew Israelite images of JC to see if they are depicting JC with the sun. Let me let me let me Google search Black Jesus. Let's see. Uh oh. Let's see. Well, well, it appears. Well, y'all, y'all decide, okay? Y'all tell me what y'all think. I'm just gonna show it because I don't want to pick any fights with people. Okay. So, do y'all see a sun here? Do you see a sun? Y'all see sun in these images with the black JC? <clears throat> How about here? Y'all see that? I see a sun, but what does that mean? You decide, you decide. Now, I don't know who made these images, but here we see the rays of the sun, right? This is the source of the this is the origin, the physical origin of the crown of thorns. Y'all see the radiant, the radiant, uh, okay, so that couldn't be reached. Y'all see the sun rays? Okay, so here is another one. Maybe we looked at that already. Here's Tupac with the sun. All right, so here we are. So all of these have the sun. Here's another one with the sun. All of these have the sun. Check check that out. Okay. Let's see. Is this JC? Okay, this one does not have the sun. This one has the sun. Here is a more with the crown of thorns, so that's the sun. Okay, now what do y'all think about this one? Let's see. What do y'all think about this one? Can you say that that these are that these are Rays of light. I mean, I, I mean, I know what it's supposed to be, right? But can you, can it have a double meaning? Y'all see what I'm trying to say? 
Y'all decide. I see it's and red. It's a white, yellow, and red. These are the colors of the sun. Right? The white, yellow, and red or orange. These are the colors of the sun. And they're situated about his head. So look at this, y'all. This is a circle behind this Christ figure's head. Okay? So, do you, so I mean, does this say a uh, double meaning? Y'all think they expect y'all won't catch it? Here's his crown of thorns, which is a reference to the sun. The white woolly hair, from my understanding, has to do with Aries, the lamb. Has to do with Aries, the lamb. It is astrological. Okay? JC, the Christ figure never walked the earth as a man. Okay? White woolly hair is because of Aries. Aries, the ram. Okay? Rams have white woolly hair. Clear? Y'all get it? When was JC? When is Easter celebrated? The spring equinox. That's Aries. Y'all see? So, okay, now here, look at this. Here's a circle. Here's the sun, a circle. Now let's go back. Look at the circle. Now let's go back to the Hebrew Israelite JC, okay? Let's go back to the Hebrew Israelite JC. And here he is. He has a circle behind his head, except for it's broken up. Do y'all see that? So I'm going to go with, now y'all can do what y'all want to do, but I'm going to conclude for myself that this is actually a sun. Okay? It's a form of art. I wish I could remember the name of it. It's hiding the actual image, meaning. So this has two meanings, okay? So if y'all can't see that, look at where the sun begins. The sun, be the sun begins just under his chin in this image, okay? So it's still about his head here. So let's take a look. Ah, okay, so here's another one. Y'all see that now in this image? Where's that image I just had? Oh, in this image. So the sun is also, it has a design, right? Look at this image. The sun has a design. So the Hebrew Israelite sun also has a design. Okay, so that image has a hidden meaning that you're not supposed to catch, that it's a sun. See, that was supposed to escape your perception. Why? Because you trust them. That's why you trust them. Take a look at the, the, the decor, the decoration of this sun disc behind him. Okay. Let's go back to the Hebrew Israelite JC. All right, there you go. The decorative sun disc. 
that's hidden from you. Y'all thought this was supposed to be a menorah, right? Okay, but this is actually the sun disk. This is astrology, y'all. See how you've been played? <clears throat> and how did they play you? They played you with a mind game. Played your perceptions. There was one lady, I wish I could remember her name, but I've thought about her. She left me a message and her, her, her comment was something like this. I'm gonna paraphrase. Her comment was something like, <clears throat> was something like, uh, brother, it would be a whole lot easier to trust you if you take off your sunglasses. And uh, I wrote her back. I replied to her comment with something like, I like my sunglasses. In short, I like my, and they're actually not sunglasses, they're reading glasses. But I also mentioned that she shouldn't trust anybody when it comes down to this, right? I always tell Zion Law School scholars, you must be suspicious, always read suspiciously because the people who, the vast majority of people who are doing this kind of stuff are not sincere. Many of them are narcissists, very high, on the narcissist end of the spectrum. Many of them want influence and money and access. And what better way to get these things through religion? Y'all hear me? Now, I don't teach religion. I've always told people, I'm not a religious leader. Don't come asking me stuff that you would ask your pastor. Because I don't have any answers for you. <clears throat> I'm an educator, okay? If you want an education, I give you that. But you got to make your own decisions in this life. If you come, if you come here and work with me, okay? So tell me what y'all think about this. This deceptive intentionally deceptive i'm gonna come out and say that this intentionally deceptive image of the christ figure this is a sun disc behind him it's it's decorative decorated with the intent to deceive so that you will not recognize it y'all see, see it, initially you think it's a menorah at the right menorah, yeah. I haven't done this kind of stuff, y'all, in so long. I had such a, um, I struggled, y'all, with whether or not I should do this, these presentations. You know, but I, um, but anyway, I did it. All right, and here we are. And here we are, all right? Okay, so the, these are the menorah. Oh, that's a beautiful monarch. Why are they showing monarch for menorah? Did I type it wrong? Huh. But we're here, and the consequences are whatever they might be. You know, I don't really care. I think that uh, I think that this is a good thing um, because I really don't want to deal with religious people anymore. If y'all can understand me. I don't want to help people uh, to come out of that. 
I'd rather you come to me already out of it. If you got one foot in and one foot out, you know, even that's okay. But full blown religious um, <laughs> psychosis, full blown religious psychosis, I don't want to deal with that no more. Or the people. So, y'all, can y'all see? Can y'all see here the menorah here? Okay. Can y'all see the artistic um, or what they did to show you a menorah? Right? But it looks like a sun. Okay. <clears throat> So for me, that's very disingenuous. Let me see if y'all can see it. Okay. So let's go back to the Christ figure. <clears throat> let's go back to the Hebrew Israelite. I don't know which organization uh, created this art. I have no idea. Oh, it's right here. Okay. So y'all see it? You know why I'm able to see this right away? Because the religion that I was in for decades probably three and a half decades or close to it because they they use loaded images. They use loaded images, okay? And when I became aware of it, I started studying their, their art and I began to see all of this stuff <clears throat> okay so here it is y'all right there in your face okay it is just artistically shown it's the sun presented by another image that's all all right Let's see another, here's another piece of art. Okay. Can y'all see that? See that the, how the, how the sun has been uh, decor, decoratively presented in this Christ figure. Let's try this. Let's see what we come up with. So uh, I may need to stop the share again. Hold on, y'all. I don't like this about StreamYard. I mean, shoot, you should just be able, you should just be able to. Um... All right. So we see images. Okay, here. So here's something. What is this one? Do y'all see that? Now this is from troglodytes. Now the the menorah is in front of JC, but the Hebrew Israelite menorah is behind JC. Y'all see it? Okay. Everybody see that? All right, y'all, here's the menorah on the bottom of JC. 
Okay, so to me, what I'm seeing is just a reflection of Christianity. That's why I always call he, the, the New Testament Hebrew, Hebrew Israelites, Hebrew Israelite Christian. Maybe that's offensive to them. Okay, but And now they're telling y'all that y'all are not in religion when y'all are a part of them. They say it's not a religion, it's a nation. Well, but they have religious titles that come from the church, church. Okay. And y'all leaders are called elders, right? So y'all got pagan deity worship all up in that so you're using religious terminology religious titles titles that are associated with uh deities giants and titans at that y'all just totally totally getting played excuse me all right i'm getting bored here is another son, okay? All right, so y'all know Christianity stole, <clears throat> it's just a hodgepodge of stuff that they collected from Hinduism, uh, Saturn worship, Zoroasterism, did they just borrow stuff? <laughs> well, actually, that would be stole, right? But anyway, I'm bored with this. Let's move on. I'm going to show y'all something else. Oh, here's a good image of the crown of thorns. Y'all see the crown of thorns there? The roosters crown or the cock's cone see the statue of liberty see the sun rays y'all see it y'all see his hair is gold or blonde that's because the sun is gold okay his beard is white because aries aries is aries the ram the white sheep's hair okay the the sash here is gold because of the sun the fire is the sun okay these things are gold because of the sun okay <clears throat> all right so let's move on i'm tired of it i'm tired of it <laughs> ah shoot let me see what y'all see on the screen. Let me see what you see on the screen. Oh, here's an even better one. Here's another one, y'all. Let me show this, okay? And then let me be fair to them because it's their art. I don't want them to say I'm misrepresenting them. Okay, so here's the menorah. The fire represents the sun. Y'all see that? The fire represents the sun. Okay. The gold represents the sun. You should recall that we saw the hybrid JC with the menorah in front of him and a menorah at the bottom of him. Okay, y'all? But in any case, the menorah is there, just like in Christianity. But they're telling y'all, the Hebrew Israelites are telling y'all that they're not Christian, but they're using Christian images. Christian symbology. All right, so wake the F up.
wake the F up. So now let's look at something else. I will show y'all. Where is it? Mm. Let's check this out. All right. Let me get rid of Black Jesus. <laughs> what what a what a title, Black Jesus. I mean, when you look at the lawful meaning of black. It's uh, and then Jesus, right? It don't match. L. So why am I looking up L? Well, let's see. What are your leaders called? Elders, right? In your, in your church, they're elders, uh, bishops and cardinals, and deacons. Now, y'all already know that deacons are, are constellations located near the zodiac signs. So each of the 12 zodiac signs have constellations that are located in their neighborhood. For example, like a neighborhood store, a neighborhood shopping mall. These are deacons, right? You can, you can equate those with being deacons, constellations that are located near each of the zodiac signs. Okay, cardinals. Cardinals. These are the cardinal points the solstices and the equinoxes, right? The seasons, y'all see? At what point does this exceed the probability of coincidence, y'all? So Helios, 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 L, Father of Heaven. Isn't that what JC called his power? Didn't he say call him Father? Didn't he call his deity Father? Y'all know that the ancient, our ancient ancestors did not call a deity father, okay? The few instances where it does come about, I believe it's in, Jer in maybe Jeremiah or Isaiah and one somewhere else, obviously those are injections because it was not the norms. They just threw it in there so that it can have a connection to the Old Testament, y'all. So who is this father of the heavens? Who is this L? Well, let's look at it. At the top we see here, well, this is Wikipedia. Let's see what Wikipedia has in here. L, father of heaven, Saturn, and his major son, Hadad. Father of Earth, uh oh, Jupiter, Jupiter, Jupiter. Are symbolized by both the bull and both wear horns on their headdresses. In Canaanite mythology, El builds a desert sanctuary with his children. And he has two wives, leading to speculation 
that at one point L was a desert deity. Okay, now let's look at L here. L is a Northwest Semitic word meaning what? Quote unquote G O D. Okay. Or deity. So this is speaking what connotatively? Because we know what? This G O D is an injected word. It's injected into scripture, all right? G-O-D is injected into scripture in the Latin, it's Dios or Deus. It means Zeus or deity, okay? Let's continue. Referring to any one of the multiple major ancient Near Eastern deities. A rare form of Elah. Y'all see that? Or Illa, Illa. Y'all see it? <clears throat> a rarer form of, of L is Illa, represents the predicate form in Old Akkadian and in Amorite. The word is derived from the Proto Semitic Il, meaning God. Okay, now y'all should note that this word God was not in existence, okay, at that time. All right, Latin was not in existence during this time. Clear, y'all? The God is an external deity. <clears throat> so this is why you need to understand language. Other names, other names, El Elyon, El Shaddai, Adon, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right? And so here's the image of the deity. But let's, I don't want to focus on that. I want to focus on Saturn. So L, father of heaven, Saturn. Let's look at the images of Saturn. This is the deity Saturn. Okay. Take a look at these deities. All right, Saturn <clears throat> was a deity in ancient Roman religion and a character in Roman mythology. He was described as a god of time. So god of time, that's Kronos, right? He was described as a god of time, generation. So is this generation as in new beginnings or new life forms or the dead? and decaying, coming back to life, or new life coming from the death and decay. Dissolution, y'all see where I'm going, right? Okay, winter time, things die and decay. Springtime, they regenerate. So generation, regenerate. Dissolution would be what? A death and decay. Abundance, wealth, agriculture, Okay, so now we're seeing references to what? Nature. Okay, abundance, wealth, agriculture, periodic renewal. So there we in again. This has something to do with spring, right? And liberation. <clears throat> wealth came from agriculture and animals and still does, y'all, and still does. See, when... When the fake stuff dries up, things that have true value, like land, cattle, other tangibles, well, now guess what? Those are the things that have value, all right? To this day, all right? Saturn's mythological reign was depicted as a golden age of abundance and peace. Interesting that they would use golden. So I'm, I'm, what came to my mind is the sun. Christ is always, Christ is the sun deity, right? Golden, gold sun, S-U-N. 
After the Roman conquest of Greece, Saturn was conflated with the Greek Titan, I believe it's gonna say Kronos. I'm not interested. I wanna to go to uh, Saturn, the Roman God in Britannica. All right, so this is a well-respected encyclopedia. Saturn, Latin, Saturnus. In Roman religion, the deity of sowing or seed. When do you sow, y'all? When do you sow? You sow in the spring. You sow seed in the spring. Y'all see the correlation where, where this is going? This is the covenant of labor, the covenant of work. Saturn, Latin, Saturnus in Roman religion, the deity of sowing or seed. Okay, that's the deity of work, labor. Okay? The Romans equated him, that's Saturn, with the Greek agricultural deity Cronus. Well, there we go. The remains of Saturn's temple at Rome, eight columns of the Pronos or porch still dominate the west end of the forest at the foot of the Clevius Capitol, Capitolinus. The temple goes back to the earliest records of the Republic, sixth century BCE. Well, let's just, we're just skimming the surface, y'all. See what else we see. Saturn facts and information on the god Saturn. Here's a quick list of facts about Saturn. Saturn was the Roman deity of agriculture, also of wealth and war. Isn't that what we see in Christianity, y'all? In fact, all of the religions, war, seeking to take other people's stuff to get wealthy by warfare, both physical and psychological. Saturn's Greek counterpart was Cronus. Saturn had two, two Saturn's two wives were, oops, uh-oh. <laughs> Y'all see that? His wife, one of his wives was, oops. Goddess of plenty and Lua, goddess of destruction. Y'all see that? Correlate this. Use your imagination. Correlate this. Does this have anything to do with Deuteronomy 28? The curses. Remember, Piscean energy is extremely negative, destructive, duplicitous. Also, Capricorn energy. Also, Aquarius. All right. And y'all know that Capitol Line Hill, that's the, the, Washington, D.C., Y'all realize was originally called Capitol Line Hill, if my memory serves me correctly? No, that Washington, D.C. was initially Rome. And where Congress sits originally was Capitol Line Hill. Okay, y'all? Let's go to the next one, see what else we find. Ah, here we go. Y'all see that? Saturn is the cult of ill. Let me repeat that, not ill. Saturn is the cult of L. The Kabbalah is the cube of capital G-O-D Saturn. Is the Lord of the Rings. So y'all went watching the movie Lord of the Rings and y'all didn't realize that y'all were seeing a religious movie. See how not knowing can mess you up? So y'all went in there. You watched a religious movie without even knowing it. All right. Okay. So Saturn, look at this, y'all. Saturn is the cult of ill, of L rather. Saturn is the cult of L. The Kabbalah is the cube of the deity Saturn. 
Okay, so you students and you Muslims, y'all see that y'all one and the same? All right, same pig with different color lipstick. Saturn is the cult of L. The Kabbalah is the cube of the god Saturn. So both the Christians and the, the Christians are, are unknowingly worshiping Kabbalah. The Muslims know that they're worshiping Kabbalah. Okay, but in any case, it's still the god Saturn. Saturn is the Lord of the Rings. There is a hexagonal, hexagonal cube on the North Pole of Saturn. All right, there you go, y'all. There is a hexagonal cube on the North Pole of Saturn. Pan is the god of Saturn. Saturn is Satan in astrotheology. Okay, y'all. Y'all worshiping Satan, you Christians. Let me say it again. You Hebrew Israelites, Christians and Muslims. As you can see, Saturn is Satan. Those who are calling themselves elders, look at the title you're wearing and you didn't even know it. Well, some of y'all might know it. Some of y'all might know it. All right. Now, when I say Satan, I'm speaking according to your doctrine. I know that there is no such living person called Satan. But that's your doctrine. The enemy of your of, of your father, the deity, the father, happens to be what? The father. Just like in the video I showed, y'all go back and watch the video, the tetragrammaton is Satan. If the tetragrammaton is Satan, that means what? The JC is Satan. Watch the video I did. You see the scriptural basis from it. And you can also read about that in the devil's pulpit. All right. The link to the devil's pulpit. I got the free PDF in the description area of this video. Okay, y'all. The worship of Saturn. The Phoenicians regarded L hyphen Saturn as their chief deity, okay? Eusebus informs us that L, a name used also in the Bible as a name for capital G-O-D. So your capital G-O-D is Saturn, is Satan, okay? So L, a name used also in the Bible as a name for capital G-O-D or God was the name of Saturn. And y'all, Saturn is Satan. Astrotheologically, Saturn is Satan. In Persia, Saturn was known as Kaban or Kaban. The different names for capital G-O-D in the Bible reflect the process of going through the many ages in which the planet, in which one planet superseded another. So I don't think we need to go any further than this. <clears throat> Let's continue, Wait, let's check this out. Saturn mythology, ancient secrets of Kronos, El, Yahweh, Ra, and beyond, I guess that's what that say. 
Though extolled as the quote unquote son, all figures of the great father possess the crescent moon as two horns, reigning over the first age. So that's having reference to either Taurus the bull, or if it's in reference to Moses, it would be the, the ram's horns, okay? So instead of Moses' face shone with light, it was so brilliant, it would be Moses came down and he had these two ram's horns in his head, indicating, indicating the end of the age of Taurus and the ushering in or the beginning of the age of Aries, okay, y'all? All right, <clears throat> so let me go back. Though extolled as the quote unquote son, S U N, all figures of the great father possess the crescent moon. The moon is, is in quotations, as two horns reigning over the first age, as the regenerative bull. So that's Taurus. In Egypt, the quote unquote sun gods. Ra, Horus, Osiris, Amen. That's how y'all end y'all prayers. So y'all believe these Christians who tell y'all that it has a, Amen has a different meaning in Hebrew. Okay, now the commandment says, don't bring another, another deity, another God before my face. But yet you're going to end your prayer with Amen or Amen. Amen, however you want to pronounce it. Come on, y'all, don't, don't drink the Kool-Aid. That's obvious. You accept that because you want to. Why would, why would the Most High have you concluding a prayer with the name of an Egyptian deity? Come on, think, think. I think, or even if it wasn't with a name that sounds ex that's phonetically exactly the name of a deity, not just a deity, but a primary deity. Y'all, come on, use your head. Wake the F up. And Pata, all take the form of a horned deity, the mighty quote unquote bull. Osiris is the son, S-O-N, of Nut, Lord of the two horns. Okay, let's continue. Saturn equals Kronos equals L equals Moloch. All right, this is having reference to the Canaanite eel. <clears throat> the God that answers by fire, let him be capital G-O-D. 1 Kings 18.24. In Greek, in Greece, the oldest Dionysus appeared as the fire god Moloch Ariel. Interesting, right? Ariel. Ariel. He was a Phoenician and Arabian Baal or Baal Saturn, the Hebrew El Moloch. To Cronus, Saturn, the Phoenician sacrifice. Y'all see that? To Cronus, who is Saturn, who is El, who is your deity, the Tetragrammaton. The Phoenician sacrificed every year the beloved and only begotten children. Sat uh, to Saturn as wicked demon typhoon. All right. Okay, so y'all's capital G O D is El Molech, is Satan in your doctrine. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Give me a second, y'all. Mm. slept with the air conditioning on and I should not do that all right so let me click on this 
I just want y'all to see the tetragrammaton, all right? Lord of the Ring, Saturn, L, Yahweh, Kronos. All right, y'all? Can y'all see my screen? All right, good. All right. I'm just going to scroll slowly through this, all right? Take a look here. Y'all get married with wedding rings. Here's why. Y'all see the eye? Y'all see the, the ancient symbols of Saturn? Do y'all see the sun with the two horns? Y'all see that? Y'all see the crescent moon? See that? The wedding ring. South pole of Saturn looks like an eye. Y'all have seen the cow, right? With the sun disc and the two horns in, in Egypt. Y'all see it? <clears throat> All right, let's continue. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna scroll through this slowly. Y'all pause the video on the replay if y'all wanna read it, okay? Saturn mythology, the Saturn myth and thunderbolts of the gods. All right, this is by David Talbot and Wallace Thornhill. Okay, so let's see what we can see here. All right, so here we are. Y'all see the horns? Y'all see the symbology now? Take a look. Okay. All right, what else do we see? Battles of the Gods and Titans. All right, so y'all can correlate these Egyptian images to see what their origins are. Y'all see the hat, the headdress he has right here coming from Saturn. Y'all see that? Hey, look at my cursor. Here's where that image comes from. It's purely astrological. Y'all see it? And here you see these images, purely astrological. Okay, y'all? So pause the video and study these images. Whew. Oh, say, okay, so Kronos decoded. I'm just going to scroll slowly through here until I see something that I'm interested in sharing. Kronos or Kronos was the king of the Titans and the deity of time. Okay. In particular, time when viewed as destructive, as a destructive, all devouring force. Okay, Kronos ruled the cosmos during the Golden Age after crash trading and disposing his father. You see the kind of people they are? I mean, who's, who would even think of something like this, y'all? Right? Castrating your own father. After castrating and disposing his father, Uranus. Okay, Sky. So I'm, I'm thinking disposing means he, he uh, terminated him in fear of a prophecy that he would in turn be overthrown by his own son. Chrono swallowed each of his children. That means he ate his children as they were born. This is the deity y'all worshiping. Hence, hence you're sacrificing your deities to El Molech. Doing what? 
eating children. Y'all see it? Saturn equals Ra. Y'all got that? In Egyptian mythology, in Egyptian mythology, Saturn equals Ra. Y'all see that? Sometimes Ra wears his father's headgear. Okay, so here it is. All right, so y'all can study these images on your own. All right. Let's continue. Okay, all right, here we are. Ra is the great light who shineth in the heavens. Thou art glorious by reason of thy splendors. Though the designation seems bizarre, the expression star of Helios. Okay, so we see Helios being used. The author uses the word Helios at the in the, in the uh, second to the last sentence. Okay, on page two hundred and eleven, he says. He says, uh, my, dear, uh, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Was originally a cross language pun, which depends on the fact that the vocative of Helios, a vocative is meaning when you're addressing someone. The Greek word for son is Heli. Matthew also, uh, Matthew in fact, has Eli. In his version, Matthew 27, 46, solar references pervade the resurrection story. So here's the solar reference. Well, the word here is what? Helios. So now we're talking about the star of Helios or the star of soul. Was applied to Saturn. Y'all see that? Of the Babylonian star worshipers, the chronicler Diodorus writes, to the one we shall call Saturn, they give a special name, sun star. Okay, so now JC is the sun star or star Helios. Saturn. Similarly, the Greek historian Anonis gives Kronos an Arab name of, of the quote-unquote sun, S-U-N. So Kronos meant only Saturn and not other celestial, and no other celestial body. All right, so y'all see this? Of soul, others say of Saturn. So let's read this. Hyginus, enlisting the planets, names first Jupiter, then the planet of soul. The planet of S O L, Latin for sun, S U N. Others say Saturn. Y'all see that? Anyway, I think uh, I think this is clear enough. I wanted to find the tetragrammaton. Oh, here. What is this saying? This image right here. The ancient name of Saturn was Kronos, Cronus, or El Elohim. In modern times, or it was translated rather, it was rendered rather as capital G-O-D, the Lord of the Rings, those that were chosen, elected by El. So y'all see the prefix L and L and elected. Y'all see that? The prefix L and elected, L acted. Okay, elected by L were called Elites or Elites, allowed to wear a crown. Crown comes from the word Kronos, Kronos, crown of thorns. Crown of thorns. That's why, Jay, let me show the image. Let me show the image. Do I still have it? Let me look this back up. Let's make our correlation. Integrations and correlations.
Let me find black Jesus again. Give me one second, y'all. Hold on. All right. So here we are. All right. We see the sun. This is Kronos. This is Saturn. I'm introducing you to your God that you did not or you were not aware that you are worshiping. Welcome. This is your power, El Moloch, Saturn, Kronos, the God of destruction and regeneration. The God of seeds and sowing. That springtime explaining the white hair, the woolly hair of the Lamb of Aries. Also, this is why he's called the Lamb of God. Whose Lamb? Saturn's Lamb. Cronus's Lamb. Y'all see how you've been played? Played like a cheap piano. Now, whatever you decide to do with this, that's your business. But don't say you did not know. Okay, because you can that, you know now. Harmonize yourself with nature. Stop worshiping these external deities. Come back and follow natural law. The Most High's commandments are natural law, period. Okay. So here's another black Jesus. Here you see the crown of thorns. Okay. Isn't that interesting that Saturn is God of destruction, regeneration, so the crown of thorns represents not only the emitted rays of the sun, but you stick a thorn, that's going to hurt, right? Saturn will hurt you. This deity will hurt you, as we see by the history. I'm talking about the real history of Christianity. Oh, look at this one. See, y'all see the sun behind him? Look at this one. I wish I would have found this one first. Y'all see that? See the decorative sun? Y'all got religion. You got the Christ figure with a different color paint. His paint is brown. Still has the sun disk behind him. What is this? This is Saturn. This is Kronos. Can y'all see it? Saturn, Kronos, Satan, astrologically, Satan. Now, the sun is astrological. So you cannot say that this deity is not referencing astral theology because you got the sun right there behind him just as the christians do so this is showing you the astral theology of jc the christ figure is satan the devil is saturn is chronos is the tetragrammaton is l i believe it's the chief deity in the El Pantheon of the Canaanite deities and El Moloch to whom 
the ancient house of Yasharala, sacrifice their children, okay? I'm gonna end it right here. I want y'all to think about what you just learned. All right? Shalawama, I'm Dr. Yasapa from Zion Law School. If you want to support my work, the links to my PayPal and Cash App are in the description area of this video. Okay, I want y'all to keep on looking at this picture. All right, keep looking at it. Keep looking at this image. <clears throat> Study it. My Cash App is dollar sign Dr. Yasapa. My PayPal is paypal.me backslash Zion Law School, okay? If you want to support my work, my project, to write the book of the law back into ancient ivory app, y'all support it with your Federal Reserve notes. For y'all, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, uh, support it with your money. That's what that means, Federal Reserve notes, okay? Uh, with your dollars, with your pesos, with your francs, with your pounds, whatever it is, whatever currency you have, support the project so that uh, I can get mass support of our people and begin and, and start to show the astrology similar to how I'm showing y'all now. Start to show you the astrology, the astral theology, and take out all of the lies and the deception, the deceit, and put back in everything that was taken out, the natural law principles, natural law itself, things like estate, hypothecation, SG, bills of attainder, so on and so forth, okay? So I need your support. Uh, before I start the project, because it's a big project, and I'm just not going to do it without mass support, y'all. So if you feel it in your heart, um, and if you know, or even if you believe that we need to have our own books, our own book of the law, so these ones who are oppressing us, we can break free from their influence. I hope y'all see from this presentation that you've been playing and we need our own stuff, okay? So the book of the law that I'm going to write will have not only the ancient Ibriath word, but it's uh, their etymological meanings. I'm gonna show how I rendered it, its function in the sentence, part of speech, uh, and much, much more so you can do your own analysis, all right? And whatever has been taken out, I'm going to put it back in. The astrology, cosmology, I'm going to put it back in. Show it clearly. Show it clearly. Okay? And I will give an opportunity for those who have a knowledge of our ancient language to write their opinions in footnotes if they so choose to, okay? So support the project. If you don't wanna support that, I, I've written several books on ancient ivory act. Y'all can go check my work. I've written a lot. I've been doing this for years now. Uh, buy my books, share them with your family, buy them on zionlawschool.org. Do not buy them on Amazon or any of those online platforms because they just take way too much money. All right, they take way too much money. It ain't even worth really selling your books on those platforms because they take so much money. All right, so if you want to support me, I have seven or eight books that I've written on Ancient Ivory Ave. Ancient Ivory Ave is our original language, okay? And the, uh, that's the language that our ancestors spoke and wrote. Clear? All right, clear, y'all? Y'all check out my classes. I got links. Any way you want to support me, 
Uh, the links are in the description area of the video. I'm tired. I don't feel well, y'all. Shalawama and Islam to all of the Moors. Remember that you are great. You are majestic. 